Hi guys and welcome back to another video again with the powers. I'm Jake. In today's video, I'll be giving you my review of the campaign game Campfire Chronicles uh, coming to you from uh, well, Campfire Chronicles Nights Fall. Actually, I'll be specific here. Uh, Campfire Chronicles Nights Fall coming to you from Incredible Dream Studios, designed by Kevin Wilson and Adela Kapuinska. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. I probably did. Uh, but uh, yeah, Campfire Chronicles Nights Fall. Okay, brand new campaign game. Just uh, started fulfilling. Uh, from Kickstarter a, a couple a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is essentially you are choosing from one of six characters, guys, called a Seeker. Okay, and you are going throughout the land doing a bunch of scenario quests. I think they said uh, there's 21 different scenario quests uh, or 21 just quests. Um, that you're going to encounter uh, throughout the course of, of this game. Of course, some of those are going to be main quests, and then some are going to be side quests as well. But you are a seeker, and a darkness has kind of descended upon the lands, and so you are going out trying to find the, the purpose of this darkness and kind of flush that out. That's just like a broad, uh, broad brush. Uh, now, I do want to state, be as fair as possible with this, uh, I have only gotten through probably about half of these scenarios in the game. Um, I have not gone through the back half yet, but I've been able to get this to the table and get a bunch of a uh, couple uh, game games of this done and then some games on my own as well. So this is kind of a first half uh, initial review of the game, but I I'm fairly confident that my expectation is the game is going to get a little bit better, uh, just a little bit, but it's going to maintain some of the same themes here uh, and concepts. So I'm going to kind of base it off of that all right um so let's go ahead let me move this gigantic beast uh out the way and let's go ahead and kind of dive uh right into the game all right so starting right off with my theme guys uh so i'm gonna go ahead and give the theme here an eight and a half out of ten right uh campaign game you know, it's going to have good story writing. The game has good story writing, good narration, different things like that. Um, I think it's great. For me, sometimes, though, I think um, with a lot of writing and different scenarios of bouncing back and forth, um, you kind of get lost in it a little bit and where it's very hard to keep track and remember of everything that's kind of happened exactly. Uh, specifically, uh, being able to the cool thing about this game is you can like save it uh, During certain points or like if you want to stop in the middle of sin in, in a middle of a scenario um, If you don't do that scenario for a while Then you kind of forget what happens and so you know a particular instance that happened in my game group uh, We got through uh, we We're doing a quest got all the way through to where we were going to fight the boss, decided to stop it, put it up, and then we probably didn't meet for about another two weeks. And so then when we picked it back up, we kind of forgot what happened uh, uh, with that quest. And so uh, we kind of had to relook it over and kind of remember, like, I think this is what happened. I think this is what happened. Like, I knew we were at the boss fight. Uh, so you can get kind of get lost uh, with that a little bit. So I think for me, that kind of distracts it from that nine. Uh, but overall, I think it's got great storytelling, great writing, a, a lot of personal actions, right? Where like one thing is keying off the another. I like when you set up the quest, like it gives you the flavor text of the quest and it like really immerses you um, in the game which for two specific things uh, that stood out for me. The first one was based upon what character you're playing when you go through these different story texts and scenarios, uh, certain things can have advantages and disadvantages for having certain characters in your party. Some give you the option, some don't. So that's really cool. Again, it's like choose your own adventure kind of thing a little bit. Uh, and then, which which is nothing new to campaign games, right? Some, some most campaign games have that. If this person's in your party, you get this bonus. Or if this person's your party it's a negative the cool thing though that really stands out for me in terms of the theme is they have this thing called conundrums okay where you are presented with two choices or three choices and it's going to give you the recommendation of if this character is in your party this is the choice that they would make if this character is a party this is the choice that they would make so it allows you the opportunity to play the game through the lens of that specific character like if you want to make choices that they would make then you have to select this choice. But what's what's cool about it is it's a conundrum because the entire party must agree on that choice. And so you might have a situation where one choice might benefit one person but hurt the rest of the party or 
The rest of the party might benefit and one person might not, or you might be split three ways. And so you have to choose and work around that. So it gives you that option to, do I want to play like we should, or like how I want to play as a person, or do I want to play as how the character play, if that is kind of making sense. Uh, but I think for me, those are the two really good things that stand out with the theme here uh, in the game. So eight and a half out of 10 for me with the theme. All right, moving on to the components, guys. As always, we're gonna go ahead and drop down to the table. I'm gonna show off all the components, talk about them, and then we'll be back up top to, uh, with the setup to keep going on with the review. All right, guys, so we're down here at the table where we got all the components out. I'm gonna go ahead and give these components an eight and a half uh, out of 10. I think they are just that one notch, uh, just slightly above being great, but not quite at excellent yet. And I'll kind of tell you why. So right off the bat, uh, what I decided to pull out was a quest folio here. I think these quest folios are awesome. Like I said, you open it up, gives you that flavor text, and then inside these quest folios gives you everything uh, that you need to know. So uh, it's going to have all of your quest cards that you're going to need and give you the orders for all of that. It's going to come with a uh, boss uh, pamphlet here and then the boss standee. If you have the upgraded version of the game, you would get an acrylic standee on top of that. But the cards are just basic generic. But here's what's kind of cool about the cards is the art on the back of the card will all match the scenario that you're in. So you can see here, there's kind of like a skull and egg on the front of this uh, this folio here. Uh, and then there's a skull and egg on these cards. So I think that's a really cool uh, artistic aspect that they had. Uh, the cardboard standee, I mean generic cardboard standee, uh, the pamphlet here, just a generic uh, small slim uh, pamphlet. So that's what every uh, quest folio is going to look like. Now moving on to this map book here. Uh, I think this map book is awesome. I, I really enjoy uh, campaign or scenario games that use a map book instead of having to put all these different tiles together. Uh, definitely saves on time and like slowing down of the game. Uh, you got some cards here in the game that are just basic, uh, generic, like uh, play, trading cards or playing cards uh, that you would find. Uh, these are all statuses, okay? Uh, you have the bag. So in these bags, you have uh, chits, all right, that are in the game. So these are all plastic chits, and they're going to have uh, icons of different characters. So let me get some of the different character chits um, out here. And so that's going to be how turn order is going to be determined. Uh, you got some other chits that are going to do different things as well, but these are really nice plastic. Um, I, I like how they went that route with these plastic chits instead of cardboard chits uh, in the base game here. So I think that is really, really cool uh, about the game. Uh, let's take a look at some of the players. So in a uh, character box, each character is going to have their own box, the seeker box, right? On the back of the box, it's going to give you some information about that seeker and then basically what role he is best at playing. But in this box is going to come an acrylic standee of your character. In the, in the base game, uh, all the characters will be acrylic standees, so I think that's awesome. I mean, the artwork on these acrylic standees are phenomenal. And then uh, you are going to have... Let me get this board out. So then you'll have the character board. So this is a dual layer of board. Uh, got some cool artwork here on the back and it's gonna have a uh, wheel here that you're gonna uh, move, you're gonna have to set up yourself uh, for his health. But um, just very fresh, very crisp, clean to this. Now you might have saw this, uh, this card in between. This was part of the Kickstarter. They had different uh, just art, artwork of the characters that you could enjoy. Uh, things like that, but that is the character pamphlet. I'll go ahead and throw the uh, the acrylic standee uh, on top of that. And then the last thing is going to be the deck of cards. Okay, now the card sleeves you see here are, do not come with the uh, base game. These are the upgrade kit. Uh, but each character is going to have their own deck of cards to be able to do different things. And so on the back of these cards is just generic, uh, just a generic Kinfire uh, artwork here. But again, nothing really special to the cards. Um, I do like some of the flavor text on like the abilities of each um, of each character. So like this guy, Fireball, right? With a jester, a ball of flame shoots from your hand, streaking towards your target before exploding in a fiery blast. So I think that's kind of cool. Again, just something that gives it extra notch above 
um, a great standpoint. All right, uh, continuing to move on, uh, you got cardboard tokens that kind of serve as abilities. Um, like, so whenever you pull a enemy chip from the bag, they're gonna have numbers and that's gonna determine what uh, ability. So you set these little cardboard uh, things up um, to determine that, all right? Uh, you have some fate tokens over here, which are cardboard. Uh, you have a, uh, let me get this loot box out. You have a loot box, which is gonna contain a whole bunch of different loot packs and uh, I should have got it out earlier. All right, so you have this loot box here, which is gonna contain some loot packs, a void box, and then these packs right here are for the different cities uh, that you will visit uh, in the game. So everything here is sealed until they tell you to open it. So again, this, this is really, really nice. Uh, and you do have some other tokens called Kingfire tokens, which are cardboard, and then you have money as well which is a token also so these are the the money tokens that you got here and then these are the kinfire cardboard tokens now in the upgraded version of the game uh you can get some metal coins uh just like that but that is pretty much all the components in the game guys again oh, oh last thing last thing i forgot the thing that really makes it stand out is i'm gonna have to clear this table out and show you guys here is the top of the box serves as the game board, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and uh, look at this. So this is the top of the box of Kimfire Chronicles. So it looks like that. So I think that is a phenomenal uh, way to do, to do that. And for me, that's what gives it that extra 0.5 as well uh, some could even say it, they would consider that excellent uh, for doing that but these are all the components of the game eight and a half out of ten let's go ahead and jump back right up and finish off with the rest of our review all right guys so moving right into the setup here uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give the setup an eight and a half out of ten look uh, most campaign games the setup is going to be a beast all right you're gonna have to get all this content out you're gonna have to get tiles out things like that with this game the setup is the way they have it with the quest folios the character folios um, I think they have almost a little tiny bit more efficient system than they do with uh than gloomhaven jaws of the lion right it's almost essentially the same thing because you got the scenario booklet but here everything is on one scenario booklet uh you don't have to get out minions because it's only fighting one boss but they do have those little folio boxes um, for the uh, for the characters and stuff like that, but here the the folio boxes make tear down and set up so so easy. I mean, for a big campaign game like this, it usually takes me about uh, eight minutes, you know, eight to ten minutes to kind of set up the game and get everything out and ready. Sometimes even less, uh, depending on how quickly I'm moving from there. But eight and a half out of ten for the setup. Okay, moving on to the length here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the length an 8 out of 10. I think this is a great length for a uh, campaign style game. A lot of these quests, like again, the whole purpose here of Incredible Dream Studios was to make a campaign game that didn't feel long, dragged out. A lot of the quests, I would say majority of them on average are only running about 40 to 45 minutes, okay? I mean, you can easily get in, if you're having like a three hour game night, you can easily get in two to three different quests uh, and, and city, going to the city every time after the quest and taking those actions. You can get about two to three in throughout a game night and I think that's just awesome because like I said, with 21 different quests, if you're going like once a week, really, it only takes about seven, uh, seven to ten. I say seven to ten weeks uh, total in order to get this game fully played out and through the table. So it makes it really accessible here with the length of some of these scenarios. All right, so eight and a half out of ten for me. All right, moving on to the difficulty. As always, guys, remember the lower the number, the easier we feel the game is. The higher the number, the harder we feel the game is. I'm going to go ahead and give this a 3 out of 10 here. Look, I don't 
think this game is that difficult at all. I think this is a very easy teach, a very good introductory campaign style game uh, to get in here, right? Now, of course, the game is going to be difficult at some points in terms of like fighting bosses and monsters and getting beat and losing, right? But I'm just talking about from a difficulty standpoint of how easy is it to pick up the game. Again, like I said, it's super easy, right? You really only do two things on your turn. You only have two choices on your turn. That's either play an action card from your hand or pass my turn and either draw or discard a card, right? Of course, you can move either before or after, but really other than that, there's no other difficult concept to the game. The most challenging aspect of the game is going to be that deck construction piece. So uh, you're going to be able to, you know, when you buy items and things like that, uh, you'll be able to put those in your deck. You'll be able to uh, swap out cards in your deck, but you must maintain a limit of 18 cards. And there's on your character board, there's going to be certain colors of cards that you have to have. Okay. And so as the game uh, you get through these different scenarios, like you're going to have to be mindful of, okay, I got to make sure, you know, I have like four blues, three reds and two greens in my deck, right? And I can't go past that or under that limit at all, right? So I think that's the most challenging aspect of the game. But overall, as a whole, again, it's very simple. You're reading story text, a monster comes out, you draw a trip from a bag. If it's your turn, you go, you take one of your two actions. If it's not your turn, the monster goes or somebody else goes. You can also do something called boost, which is a boost your other uh, the other player's actions, which is kind of cool. And like that's kind of the main draw of the game. Uh, but that's super easy as well. So three out of ten here for difficulty. All right, moving on to the replayability. Uh, this one might be a hot take. I might get a lot of uh, flack for this one, but I'm going to go ahead and give the replayability a five out of ten here. Um, I, I just don't see a lot of replayability here with the game. Again, because within, it's not like there's multiple pathways within each quest line, right? Every quest is essentially going to be the same thing. It's gonna lead you to the exact same fight or boss, and then it's gonna have the exact same outcome. The only replayable aspect of this game is just playing with a different character and seeing how they feel, okay? Um, also, in terms of kind of putting everything back together, uh, you know, essentially, through, like I said, throughout the course of the game, you're going to be opening up these packs, right? So you got copper packs, gold packs, and silver packs. And these are like treasure or loot packs, okay? Well, when you open these packs, uh, what you do is then those cards go into a general pool that you always have with you, that you can take with you. Like, okay, hey, let me look at that pool again. I might want to trade something out. Well, and also throughout the course of the game, you're, you collect memories, okay? These memories, some tell you to put them back in the quest folio, like discard it at the end of the quest. Others, you keep with you the entire time. So when you finish the entire campaign, my assumption is it's going to be difficult to remember where uh, that quest card came from unless you're looking at the art on the back of the card and having to figure out that way. So I would imagine it would be a, a chore to try and reset everything back to zero to go ahead and start over a new campaign. So that's why I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. Okay, so moving on to the price. I'm going to go ahead and give the price here a 6 out of 10. So I backed this game with the upgrade kit for $175 on Kickstarter. Uh, the base version of the game on Kickstarter was going for $99. That now is now going for $150, okay? I've seen it for as low as about $120, $125 on eBay. And uh, at that price point, that 125 to 150 price point that you could pick it up right now, I, I just don't, I think it's okay. Like, I don't think it's that great, right? Because if I'm comparing it to the, the bee's knees of campaign games, which is Gloomhaven, you can pick Gloomhaven up for around 75 to 150 bucks. So this is right in that same price range as Gloomhaven. Now, Here's the differences. Gloomhaven, you're getting a much bigger production. You're getting way more content. You're getting way more value. Gloomhaven has miniatures in it, right? This, uh, if you just get the base game, the only acrylic is in your characters. Everything else is standees. You're just getting generic cards. It, it's a 
slimmed down. What's cool about it is a slimmed down version of a campaign game, but it's a basically the same price as a majority of other campaign games. So I just don't see a lot of value here with it being 120 to 150. Uh, I would wait for it to drop if it does then I would look in that like one, 100 to like maybe 110 price range. I think that'd be a good price range. Like if I'm, like me personally, if I'm walking, if I'm walking in, in a, a game store and I'm looking at the shelves and I see this game, right? It looks interesting to me. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I look at the price tag and I see 150. Like, yeah, nah, I'm probably gonna have to pass on that. If I look at the price tag and it's like 100 to 110, you know, I might, I might look a little bit like, okay, like, hold on now. I might, I might, you know, you let me tweak my head a little bit. So that's kind of where I'm at with the feeling of it. So just six out of 10 for me, I think at that 150 price point is just okay. All right, guys, moving on to my overall rating here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this an eight and a half out of 10. Uh, after everything I said, I think, look, here's what really stands out for me in terms of Kim Fire Chronicles, it is a slim down campaign game, right? If you like campaign games, you know how long and arduous they can be. Uh, this one really does a great job of slimming everything down. The setup is a breeze. The teardown is a breeze. The save system is, is a breeze in trying to save stuff now. Depending on if you save in the middle of the quest, uh, and you take a while to come back, you, you might forget where you're at. But other than that, I think the components and everything that they have are, are great. Really, really a notch, that one notch, a little mini notch above great and what they've done here. Uh, for me, what really, I would give this a nine. But the thing that hurts this game is the turn system, right? Uh, you're drawing those chips out of the bag and taking turns. Now, while that is a phenomenal way to do it, a change of pace to do it, what can happen is sometimes one person might not play an entire battle at all, right? We were playing a game, it was me and three other buddies. We're playing, you know, I think like eight turns went by before I could, I even got to take my turn, right? And so basically there's a lot, a lot of downtime for some players here. And I think that just, for me, just gives it that little notch below a nine, or else I would say that this is an excellent game. But if you like campaign games, this is a slimmed down, streamlined version of a campaign game. This is very easy to get to the table uh, with a friend group. You can knock two or three scenarios out in a couple hours and really enjoy it and, and just bringing in a different vibe and a different flavor to what generic uh, campaign games are, all right? All right, the last thing, guys, is if I have the opportunity to back this game again, would I do so? I would say yes. Now, however, doing that, I would change my pledge. I would not get the upgrade kit. While the upgrade kit is nice, you know, it comes with player mats. It comes with acrylic standees of all the characters. Look, I said in a couple videos that I like the acrylic standees more than the adventures, but you wonder how much of a pain it is to get the film, the protective film of 48 different acrylic standees. I mean, that took me a good like two and a half hours to do all that stuff. Like it was a pain. I'm like, okay, maybe no more acrylic standees in a big campaign game before. Um, but look, I just don't think like the, the card sleeves are nice. The, the acrylic standees are nice, but they all come in a separate box. And so whenever I get out the game, I have to get that stuff out the box and then put all the player mats in that box and stuff like that. So for me, um, I don't think that it was really worth it to get that upgrade kit. I would just go with the straight base game for $100. Like I said, I think at that price point, that's great, great value for the game. But all right, guys, enough of me rambling. That's my review of Kimfire Chronicles Night's Fall uh, coming to you from Incredible Dream Studios. Go ahead and drop a like for me. Help us out. Like the video. Comment down below. Have you thought about back? Have you thought about getting this game? Uh, do you have it? What are your thoughts on it? Do you agree with me? Is there anything I said wrong uh, that you want to correct? Drop it all down in the comments below. Are you enjoying this content? And as always, guys, if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so we can keep bringing you more awesome content. All right, guys. Have a great one. Bye.